So one thing I can definitely recommend is coming down to this place here on the island, on Isca Island, thermal hot springs called Sorgetto. Over there you can see steam rising from the water, lots of people in, in the rock pools. And I'll tell you what, it really is warm. Occasionally you have to step up, step out of the water because it's just too hot. The thermal, the heat coming out of these rocks is incredible. Some waves of cold, some waves of warm. It really is something definitely worthwhile checking out. So if you didn't already know, this is a volcanic island. That's why there's thermal springs. And if you look up over behind my head, you see volcanic rocks all over the place. This water really is hot. It might look busy, but I've been told it gets a lot busier in the summertime. So if you come into the island to visit, whether it's for a day or a week or so, make sure you come and visit Solgetto Thermal Springs. So one thing you have to be aware of is that this isn't one regulated heat, it pulses hot. And when I mean hot, I mean really hot. And just be aware of how sharp the rocks can be. If you're gonna be climbing in and out of this rock pool of thermal hot, sp hot springs, make sure you either wear shoes or you're very careful because there's lots of algae on the rocks and it's very slippery. Someone's even cooking potatoes and eggs in this little rock pool right here. So one thing that's definitely on the to-do list, well it is on my list that's for sure, is come down here onto Isca Island, Solgetto, Thermal Springs, it really is a lovely place to spend an afternoon. So another place I can highly recommend checking out on Iska Island is Faro Chitara Lighthouse. The views from, from here are incredible. This bay, lovely turquoise water, very Caribbean-like. There's a small hike to get here. We had to walk maybe 15, 20 minutes from, uh, from the end of the track, the end of the road. And it's a lovely scenic walk, amazing views. Once again, Faro Chitara Lighthouse, definitely worth checking out. And this, is Chitara Beach. You can tell from the lovely turquoise water, it really is very Caribbean-like, and I would love to go for a swim down there. Situated on the south side of the island, you can almost, well, on a clear day you can, I've been told, you can see Naples right over there in the distance. So another place I can highly recommend, if you're like me and you love the, the nature, that you love the trees and woodland hikes, I'm at the Bosco della Maddalena. This is on the top of the hill on top of Ischia Island. This is the crater of the volcano that several million years ago formed Ischia Island. It's a lovely wooden walk. It goes on for six or seven kilometers amongst all these trees. And this really is a place to escape all those sun worshippers, to get away from the beach and really enjoy a bit of nature time. Bosco della Maddalena represents the largest forest on the island approximately 450,000 square meters worth. There's pines, there's oak trees, there's ferns, as well as chestnuts as well. This really is a great place to get away, to go for an afternoon, evening, or even a morning hike. The walk itself takes around four and a half hours to complete. So when you arrive on the island, go to the tourist office and ask them for a detailed map, and it'll show you the exact route going around this crater. 
The beginning of the walk itself is quite steep, but after 10 or so minutes, you reach the top and it's pretty much evens out to a nice fair level walking ground. One thing you're guaranteed, even on a hot day, is plenty of shade to keep you cool during the hot weather. Cities aren't really my thing. I do like the beaches, but I'll tell you what, this nature trail is right up my street. I'm loving this. So what we have here is one of several fumaroles and hot springs situated on the island. The hot gas is coming out of the ground as I put my hand nearer the hole. I really can feel a lot of heat. This is one of several of nature's wonders on the island. This is Castello Aragonese. Let's go check it out. Back in 474 BC, this castle was built on a volcanic rock and connects itself to the main town of Ischia over this way via this walkway. been here a few minutes and already this place is really impressive. I've seen some old clay pipes and some pottery and even some cannonballs. Tell you what, there's a great view from up here. some incredible views from up here. Give it a few more months and these figs should be ready to eat. I don't quite think we'd be allowed to eat them though. That is a big fennel. minutes looking at the various methods of torture back in medieval times. Tell you what, I truly am shocked from that. Those methods of torture must have been extremely painful. I really can't get over what I just saw in that museum of torture. Wow. wow. Check out this giant rosemary bush. Great for barbecues. Looks like the lemons are ready to be picked. Well, on a more positive note, it looks like they liked a bit of wine back in the day. Well, I've just noticed one of my favorite trees, the eucalyptus. 
I love those trees. And from here, you can see the neighboring island of Prochida. And in the distance over there, there's the active volcano of Vesuvio. This is what caused the devastation of the city of Pompeii. Up behind me, you can see the remains of the ancient defense tower. Somewhere up there lies the remains of a furnace which was used to make the cannonballs red hot. Wow. This area right here is known as the Terrace of the Sun. Some great views looking back towards the island of Ischia. And down here you can see the road that connects this castle, the island that is on, over to Ischia Island. I just love how they've used this volcanic rock, a local material, to build these walls. Well, that was a great way to spend a few hours. I would give that an 8 out of 10. Some great history and I'm still in shock over those methods of torture they used back in the day. But on the positive side, at least they liked a glass of wine. And if you're wondering about the price tag, the entrance fee for an adult is 10 euros, for a child it's 6 euros. The next place I can highly recommend visiting is this island called San Angelo. So here I am on the island of Sant'Angelo and I've just found this wild herb which there's plenty of back in the UK. This is called rock samphire. If you crush it, it smells like carrots and yes, in fact, believe it or not, this is a wild edible plant. So this place looks great for fishing and believe it or not, I've got a fishing rod and a bit of bread in my bag. No fish, we might try again later. Oh. <laughs> and we've caught a fish. This I caught on a little lightweight travel rod, wherever I go, when I'm on the coast, I always try and bring a travel rod with me. And here we are, here's our first fish, let's put it back. The great 
thinking about Sant'Angelo is that it's full of these lovely narrow walkways. Really characteristic for an Italian island. So behind me you can see the beach Maronte. This is the longest beach on the island of Ischia. And over there in the distance is the island of Capri. So we're now on our way to another one of the fumaroles situated on the island. Here we have it, one of the fumaroles. This is the natural hot gases being released from the earth. You can smell there's a bit of sulfur in the, in the air. And I'm sure if you put your hand near to the entrance of that funnel, it'll be quite hot. Somewhere about right there is where we just caught that fish. We're now around here. We're then gonna walk all the way along this beach over to Maronte. Maronte makes up the majority of this long beach, the longest beach on the island of Ischia. 